made you look. But now that I've got your attention, why not stick around and find out where Halloween really comes from? Or are you too much of a scaredy cat? <laughs> Despite what many Brits think is an American invention, as it turns out, it's actually the Scots who were the original trick-or-treaters. It's believed that the origins of what we call Halloween can be traced back to the ancient festival of Samhain, which was celebrated by the Celts on November 1st. Samhain translates into summer's end in Gaelic and marked the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. The Celts also believed that on the night before Samhain, the veil between the worlds of the dead and the living was at its thinnest, and that spirits, ghouls, and fairies would visit. By the 7th century, pagan Celts had been successfully converted to Christianity. The church had found that the best way to convert pagans was to come up with a similar but not quite the same alternative to an already existing calendar celebration. So the Christian All Saints Day was moved to November 1st, which, yep, you guessed it, just happened to be the same day as Samhain. Interestingly, by 1550, Samhain had been absorbed into the Christian festival of All Saints, also known as All Hallows Day. Celebrations retained much of the pagan character, offering both joyful celebration and sombre contemplation of death. In fact, the word Halloween itself might sound like it has pagan roots, but the etymology is actually Christian and is a contraction of All Hallows' Eve. By the 17th century, the principal autumn gathering in England had become Bonfire Night on November 5th, after Guy Fawkes tried to blow up Parliament. There's a whole other Anglophenia episode on this which I highly recommend. So the English were like, hello what now? But Halloween continued to grow in popularity in areas that had a strong Celtic heritage, especially Scotland, who clung to the aura of ghostly happenings and romance that the night held. Yes, romance. As it turns out, Halloween can tell you a lot about your love life. Many of the modern-day Halloween celebrations, such as trick-or-treating and carving lanterns, can be traced back to the original Scottish celebrations, many of which are described in the poem Halloween, written by the Scottish poet Robert Burns in 1759. Duking or bobbing for apples was a common pastime on Halloween, but apples were mostly used to reveal clues about one's future spouse, which is what most pre-industrial rural teenagers spent their days thinking about. I mean, they didn't have Facebook. There were many variations when it came to apple divination, including apple bobbing, where the first to pick the apple out of the water using only their mouth would be the first to marry. Slicing the apple into nine pieces where the future intended would magically appear to take the final slice. Eating an apple while simultaneously combing your hair in front of a mirror would not only show that you were well coordinated, but also show you the face of your true love in the reflection. And my personal favourite, attempting to peel an apple in one motion without breaking the skin. Toss it over your shoulder and it would land in the shape of a letter from your future betrothed's name. I used to try this one when I was a little girl every Halloween. I don't know, something about it was just so appealing. I pair this apple round and round again, my sweetheart's name to flourish on the plane. I fling the unbroken pairing over my head, my sweetheart's letter on the ground is red. Yeah, guys, any ideas? Later, apples found popularity when Halloween was brought to America by Irish and Scottish immigrants, and apple juice became the standard drink at Halloween celebrations, often served alongside popcorn, donuts, and pumpkin pie. Well, what did you expect? This was America, people. The original Scottish version of trick-or-treating was called guising, where children would venture out disguised as evil spirits so they could walk undetected by the wicked ghouls on Halloween. Instead of going door to door and simply yelling, trick or treat, they would be expected to perform a song, poem, or some other entertaining trick before being rewarded with treats, often food, drinks, coins, or soul cakes, which were small round spiced seed cakes with currants on top and were specific to Halloween. In the spirit of all this, I thought I could perform the monotonous souling song, which was often performed by children on All Saints Day when they went from house to house. <coughs> Soul, soul, soul cake. Good mistress, give us a soul cake. One for Peter, one for Paul, and one for them has made us all. Thank you. Thank you. Too kind. 
Originally, large bonfires would have been held to ward off evil spirits on Halloween and have said to have been the inspiration behind the carved pumpkin lanterns we use today. However, before the introduction of pumpkins, which are actually native to America, Scotland and in fact most of the UK carved lanterns out of meeps, otherwise known as turnips. Even when I was a girl, we carved turnips instead of pumpkins. You can see why this one won, can't you? Throughout much of the 20th century, Halloween in Britain has been a bit of a non-event. But in recent years, American-style celebrations and popularity have found their way over here. And thank goodness for that. I mean, have you ever actually tried to carve a turnip? I did, every year up until the age of about 20. And that was just spent on one turnip. Also, FYI, we don't commonly call pumpkins jack-o'-lanterns. They're just pumpkins to us Brits, with or without a scary face carved into them. Also, we like to stick to the spooky theme of Halloween when it comes to our costumes. So no cowboys or sexy librarians, just good old-fashioned monsters and ghosts. Trick or treat if you dare, but be prepared to have a grumpy anti-trick-or-treater answer the door and give you nothing but a piece of their mind. Yeah, there are still a few haters out there. Basically, if there's a pumpkin on the doorstep, then there's probably a bowl of candy, or as we call them, sweets, ready and waiting. With Halloween being my favorite time of the year, I'd love to know how you celebrate. Or maybe All Saints Day is more your vibe. Let us know in the comments. If you're feeling brave enough, then hop on your broomstick and head over to Twitter and follow us at Anglophenia. And why not give our Facebook page a like too? Thanks for what? Wait, did you hear that? It, it sounded like, oh. No. Oh wait, it's just the boiler. This one will predict your future. You'll want to turn up the volume on that one. Oh, which one is that again? Oh, you should totally witch that one. <laughs>